Now, in light of recent events in the Ukraine, I have given permission for the Chief Minister to make an urgent statement. I call on the Chief Minister. Mr Speaker, I am certain that all honourable members of the House today will join me in condemning the actions of President Vladimir Putin and deploring the ongoing military invasion of the Ukraine. Hear, hear. Hear, hear. I want to make it clear that we stand unreservedly in support today of our friends in the Ukraine. Their courage and resolve in the face of the advancing Russian forces has been nothing short of remarkable. We also stand full square with the actions that are being determined by world leaders to bring sanctions against Russia and we will play a fast and speedy role in ensuring that sanctions are enforced whenever and wherever they are requested. As I am sure you would expect, we are working closely with the UK Government on this matter and we will continue to do so. Mr Speaker, the United Kingdom is responsible for the island's international relations and the Island Man Government's policy is to keep the implementation of international sanctions in line with such measures that have effect in the United Kingdom. As the financial sanctions measures that have been introduced following Russia's invasion of Ukraine currently stand, when a person or body is added to the UK list, that person or body is automatically subject to equivalent measures in the Isle of Man. Similarly, if the UK imposes a travel ban on that person, that person is also subject to a travel ban under the law of the island. If or when the UK widens its sanction measures, for example in respect of trade with Russia, we will work to ensure that the island has the same measures in place as quickly as possible. Officials are currently working to understand the island's links to Russian persons and entities and to understand the impact on the island of possible further UK sanctions measures. This includes, but is not limited to, our aircraft, shipping and general registries. We will work to ensure that we are not a weak link in international pressure on the Putin regime. We have a solid international reputation for work in this area. Our colleagues in the Financial Services Authority and the Financial Intelligence Unit have good links with their opposite numbers in the UK and beyond. We will bring these relationships to bear as needed. The United Kingdom has announced that it will be bringing forward new legislation to target those who use the City of London for illicit financial gain. Our links to the UK authorities on financial crime are strong and we will continue to play our part. For as long as the conflict continues, we will need to remain vigilant. We need to ensure that we are basing decisions and judgments on reliable information sources. This is a conflict that is also being waged in the social media space through disinformation and misinformation. It is also being waged in the cyberspace. During times of increased tension between Russia and neighbouring countries, there is an historical pattern of increased malicious or hostile cyber activity. Whilst we are not aware of any current specific threats to the island, it is important that we all maintain a high level of awareness and do what we can to bolster our online defences. Finally, in respect of the direct global actions, I want to confirm today that the Isle of Man airspace and Isle of Man ports are now closed to all Russian aircraft and ships until further notice. In relation to visas for people coming from Ukraine, applications made by persons wishing to come to the Isle of Man are made through UK visa and, and immigration. Honourable members will have seen that the UK has announced that visa rules will be relaxed to allow people to bring over Ukrainian immediate family members as the first step in a government package to help those fleeing the Russian invasion. I can confirm that the Isle of Man will mirror that approach. In that respect, the government has set up a dedicated email address for those who need urgent support and guidance, and this can be accessed at ukraineguidance.gov.im. This will be manned by our immigration officers initially during office hours, but that will be dependent on how the crisis develops. The UK Government has indicated this path pathway is the first step in a wider range of measures to support those fleeing conflict. We will monitor the situation closely and if there are opportunities for our island to link into and offer additional support, we will do so. 
In the meantime, the Council of Ministers has agreed that it is right for us to make a financial contribution to those who are caring for those fleeing the conflict in the Ukraine. We have allocated an initial half a million pounds and are in discussions with the Disasters Emergency Committee, with whom we have a long-standing relationship. We expect them to launch a live appeal in the coming days. If they do so, we will channel our funds through this committee. Otherwise, we will look to other UN agencies who are stepping up their work in the region. Mr Speaker, this is a conflict that is close to home. This is a war in Europe and it prevents and presents significant danger. We urge dialogue and a cessation of hostilities. But whilst conflict continues, we stand with the international community and however modest our actions in the global context, we will continue to play our part in international efforts to bring about peace and support those affected by the war. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, we'll turn to questions on the statement. Dr. Allison. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank the Chief Minister for this important statement today. Would he join in me in recognising the sobering sights of fellow parliamentarians bearing arms to protect their community, their nation, and democracy? Would he also um, join with me in recognising the courage of Ukrainians and ordinary Russians protesting against the unfolding brutalities of the invasion of a sovereign state right at the heart of Europe? And will he welcome the efforts of the entire financial um, se sector on the island and the aircraft and ship registries in enforcing increasing sanctions on the Russian state and joining the worldwide condemnation of the violence being inflicted on the people of Ukraine? Thank you. Before I call on the Chief Minister to reply, I'm just going to warn members about having speeches styled as questions. <laughs> Chief Minister to reply. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I fully endorse uh, and support uh, and recognise uh, our fellow parliamentarians in the Ukraine who are today forced into an, unen an, enviable an, en an enviable position of defending their country. I also fully support those uh, in the Eastern Bloc who are currently protesting against the decision of the Putin regime to invade the Ukraine. And of course I urge everybody across the island, particularly those involved in the financial services sector, to be fully aware of all actions that they are undertaking to ensure that they are fully enforcing the sanctions that have been uh, determined by the UK and subsequently passed through via the Financial Services Authority and Customs and Excise, and also to have a general awareness about anything they are doing when they are undertaking any business transactions with any Russian national. So the supplementary question, Mr Morehouse. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and thank you, Chief Minister, for such a reassuring statement at this difficult time. With regard to accessing the island by the people from the Ukraine, will we simply mirror what is happening in the UK? And has the <coughs> FSA contacted all financial providers to get a clear and updated information about all accounts with Russian links and possible Russian links to enable further policy decisions to be made as quickly as possible? Thank you. Chief Minister. Yes. As I have said in my uh, statement, Mr Speaker, uh, we have already worked uh, and working alongside the UK in respect of those with families, Ukrainian uh, relations who want to understand how they can quickly uh, ensure the safety of family members and I urge anybody in that situation who wants to understand what they need to do please to access the email address ukraineguidance at gov.im or simply to phone uh, the government line and we will ensure that they get through to the uh, respect right immigration officer. As the situation continues to develop uh, in the coming days uh, and possibly weeks, uh, then we will work closely with the UK to understand what role the island will have in supporting what is clearly uh, setting out to be a significant humanitarian crisis. A supplementary question, Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr Speaker. And I welcome the statement from the Chief Minister this morning. But we will be judged on our actions, uh, not fine words or gestures, and can the Chief Minister indicate whether he would give an equivocal support for the Alaman taking in refugees from Ukraine, not just those who have relatives here? I have already had contact from three different people offering rooms to, to be, enable that to happen. Um, and Would he put pressure on the UK to facilitate that if it becomes necessary and probably in the near future? 
And my final point would be, could he give us any clarity? While effective um, sanctions, proactive action that the Chief Minister has outlined is welcome, um, can he give any clarity that we will continue to meet the costs inevitably rising here and support those on fixed in low incomes in, in light of the escalating costs that are predicted? Thank you, Mr Speaker. I don't know if that last part is going to be strictly within the scope of the statement, but the rest of it about refugees, Chief Minister. Uh, uh, as I've said, Mr Speaker, uh, the, these situations become increasingly complex as uh, the conflict continues and develops in the Ukraine. Our commitment is to properly understand the situation, work alongside uh, the United Kingdom government to understand what aid is needed, where that uh, should be applied, and also what needs to be done in terms of helping uh, and supporting those who are fleeing the conflict. I'm sure that in the coming days, uh, this situation will become clearer, and the Council of Ministers will work to do what it needs uh, to help uh, support that within the context of the global framework and the aid that is being provided by the United Kingdom. Supplementary question, Mr Glover. Thank you, Mr Speaker, and uh, welcome the Chief Minister's uh, statement. Uh, with Russia effectively now being shut out of the SWIFT international payment system and the sanctions imposed on its banks, uh, will the Chief Minister, there is speculation that Russia will look to uh, cryptocurrency, and will the Chief Minister just uh, assure us that that is part of the watching brief that we have amongst our financial institutions? Thank you. Chief Minister. Well, those sanctions have been applied to a number of organisations, Russian financial organisations and individuals. Any financial transaction uh, sought by those uh, uh, individuals or organisations is subject to uh, asset freezing, and uh, I give complete reassurance that we will continue to work closely and react immediately to any uh, moves by the United Kingdom to uh, ask for sanctions to be enforced against individuals or organisations connected to the Putin regime. So, point to your question, Mr Thomas. Uh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, to repeat the question from Mrs Kane, I welcome the announcement from the Chief Minister that the Isle of Man will participate enthusiastically in immigration and migration schemes. Has the Isle of Man reopened dialogue with the United Kingdom about participation in asylum and refugee schemes in the light of the current crisis or not? And the um, second question is that um, would the Chief Minister join with me in stating that there are all sorts of people that live in our island? There are Ukrainians, there are Russians, and now, at the moment, we have a, a situation where we need, all need to remember that we need to have respect for other people and that we need to, in particular, you know, protect younger people from the impacts. Because there might be all sorts of people on the Isle of Man who've had all sorts of experiences over decades of wars involving Ukraine and Russia, and children and grandchildren live here. And it would be, it would be absolutely brilliant if the Isle of Man could uh, be a model of how to deal with uh, conflict situations outside the conflict area. Chief Minister. Well, I fully endorse the uh, latter points that the Honourable Member made about having respect uh, for others. Clearly, um, for those with Ukrainian or Russian heritage or, or citizenship who may be resident uh, on our island, it is important that the community shows respect uh, at this present time. And I would urge everybody to uh, endorse that. Mr Speaker, I don't think it is the time to start uh, giving knee-jerk statements about uh, our response. I think the, uh, the situation is a fast-moving one, that uh, it is important that we continue to work closely with the United Kingdom on these matters. Uh, that's my commitment uh, to the Honourable House this morning and Honourable Members, uh, and we will make further announcements as appropriate as this situation becomes clearer. So, point to question, Mr. Morehouse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, just going back to the previous question, there was part of it that wasn't really answered. Has the FSA contacted all financial providers to get clear and updated information about all accounts with Russian links and possible Russian links? And would support be considered for island companies currently waiting to receive payments for orders from Russia? A small number of island companies face huge challenges because of this situation. Thank you, Chief Minister. 
Uh, well, I would uh, say, say to anybody that is currently engaged with, in business with Russia and they are expecting um, payments, if they believe that uh, there is a uh, genuine case for which they might need some uh, guidance, then I would urge them to contact the Department for Enterprise, uh, uh, who will deal with the situation. I want to be clear about uh, the financial services um, businesses. Everybody. Uh, is informed about the uh, sanctions. They, they're actually the sanctions list is delivered by uh, Customs and Excise, uh, and I can assure you that uh, uh, all businesses and encourage uh, all businesses across the island involved in financial services activity uh, with anybody uh, with Russian connections, please to take the utmost uh, care. Uh, clearly, those individuals. Um, there are a number of individuals who have been identified uh, on the sanctions list. Their assets are froze, currently frozen, and there are a number of financial institutions now who are uh, effectively barred from undertaking business um, on the island. That message has gone loud and clear to the financial services uh, businesses and financial services community. Uh, and uh, I uh, know that officials across the island in the financial services sector are working to understand what other uh, links and impacts uh, the sanctions will have uh, on our local businesses. I'll take our final three supplementary questions. First, uh, Ms. Farragher. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, and thank you to the Chief Minister for his statement today, which is welcomed. Um, just following on from Mrs. Kane's well made and compassionate point with regard to refugees, um, can I ask will the Chief Minister undertake to open a register of people willing to accept refugees? Thank you. Chief Minister. I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, as I've said to honourable members, uh, these are still early days. I, I accept um, there is now clear evidence that uh, a humanitarian crisis is building uh, in the uh, uh, in the Ukraine and in its neighbouring countries. Uh, we need to understand uh, the extent of that, what the global uh, the global context in terms of uh, plans, the refugee plans and also within that what specifically what role the United Kingdom uh, is playing and vis-a-vis -vis then what uh, role, appropriate role the Isle of Man should play. Uh, when we get more details as the situation develops, I undertake that I will come back to honourable members uh, should council ministers feel it appropriate to change the current uh, position. But again, I want to make it clear, anybody with Ukrainian family cur currently resident on the island uh, who wishes to understand uh, their uh, position with regards to immigration to the island, please to contact, uh, uh, access the email address that I've given, and Mr. Speaker, we will make that uh, fully public uh, immediately after this um, statement, or uh, to contact the government directly. Uh, question, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does the Chief Minister agree with me, though, that immigration is different from asylum seeking and refugees, and that um, my mailbox this morning has been peppered with requests to make sure that the Chief Minister hears from the people in the Manx public who have talked with me that this is a time to actually reopen the participation of the Isle of Man in the asylum seeking and the refugee world, rather than just in looking for people to migrate here? Uh, secondly, um, just and this is a tiny point because the most important point is that the Isle of Man bears the costs of this, but can the, can, can the Chief Minister advise whether the f half a million pounds is new money or whether it's a pledge to use the um, international development money for this purpose? Chief Minister to reply. Uh, Mr Speaker, that, that is uh, uh, new money um, that we are bringing forward. Uh, and uh, again, as I said to honourable members, that uh, is our early stage commitment once the Disasters Emergency Committee has decided and determined who and, and what organisations need specific support. And we will look at that uh, moving further forward. And on the point of refugees, as I said, uh, Mr Speaker, it is early days at the moment. I recognise, of course, things are moving at a fast pace, uh, but we will continue to engage with our partners in Westminster. And when I have further uh, understanding of the situation and what role the Isle of Man should play in it, then I will uh, inform the House at the earliest opportunity. Final supplementary question on the statement, Mrs. Christian. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Scottish First Minister, Nicola Sturgeon, has demanded the Home Office lift visa requirements on those arriving from Ukraine and pledged that the Scottish Government stands ready to help and play our full part in resettlement. Would the Chief Minister confirm what is our Government's stance on this? Do they agree with this humanitarian approach? 
And furthermore, for clarity, would the Chief Minister just confirm that all businesses related to registration of any Russian ships or aircrafts will, will, uh, sorry, will freeze not just funds but also monetary assets such as property, including boats and aircrafts? Thank you, Mr Speaker. Chief Minister. Mr Speaker, businesses should act in accordance with the law and in accordance with the sanction regimes that have been that has been uh, imposed. Um, and secondly, I, I can't go on repeating myself, Mr. Speaker. I've said that a dozen times this morning. We are continuing to work closely with Westminster. Once we understand properly what is required, uh, then the Island Man will commit. Uh, I am sure to playing its full and proper role in helping and supporting. Uh, Ukrainians at this time of peril for their nation.